Solving probability problems involving word arrangements. Let us recall the fundamental counting principle, which simply states that if there are M ways to do one thing and N ways to do the other thing, then there are M times N ways to do both. Now let us look at the problem to solve. Consider the letters of the word clipboard. The letters are arranged in any order without repetition to form different words. So as we arrange the letters of the word clipboard, we are simply saying, let us do that in any order, but without repetition so that we come up with different words. But the question is, what is the probability that the word formed will start with C and end with D? The second question is, what is the probability that the word formed will start with the letter O? Now let us give solution to the problems. We start with A. What is the probability that the word formed will start with C and end with D? but probability is a fraction between zero and one. And the numerator of that fraction represents the favorable outcomes. The denominator of that fraction represents the possible outcomes. So let us start by finding the possible outcomes. That is the ways the word can be arranged without repetition. And we call that set S. Now, the word clipboard has nine letters, which means we have nine places to fill without repetition, right? So I'm going to present that in a row with nine columns. Each column represents a position. That is to say, as you can see, I have these numbers nine, down to one. So I start with the first column. That is my first position. I'm saying the first position, if I'm to place the letters of the word clipboard, all the nine have a chance to occupy position one. So I have nine choices on position one. Once it's filled, I'm left with the eight letters. Then in position two, I have to choose from the eight letters. Once it's filled, I'm left with seven. Position three, I also choose from the seven left letters and so on and so forth up to the last position, which is position number nine, where I'll be only having one letter to place there. So once we are done with the position, as you can see here, we are now saying, the numbers nine, eight, seven, six down to one are simply representing the choices at each different position. But the question is, how are we going then to find the number of ways together given these different choices at different positions? This is where in we recall the fundamental counting principle. Therefore, by fundamental counting principle, we are simply saying nine times eight times seven times six and so on up to one. And that can be shortened as nine factorial. So our possible outcomes, we have nine factorial. Now that we have found the possible outcomes, we need now to find the required outcome. That is the way the form will start with C and end with D, right? So we are supposed then to call that set F, right? 
So as such, of course, we have nine positions to fill. And we are saying a word will start with C and end with D. So first position, I place my C. Last position, I place my D. And in such a case, we are simply saying the choice is only one and the choice is only one, right? On the first and last position, right? Now I want to fill position uh, two up to position eight, right? But remember position one and last have been filled. That means two letters have already been used. How many letters are left from the um, nine? I now have seven. So position two, I have seven letters to choose from, right? Then once this position is filled, then I have six letters left to position three. Remembering that we are saying without repetition, no repetition. This is why once we fill a place, we subtract. Then this position becomes five, four, three, two, one. So I have place the number of choices for each position. Now, together, that is the different positions. Now, together, all what we have to do is we apply the fundamental counting principle to get the number of elements in our favorable set F, which will be one times. If I multiply seven times six going down to one, it's the same as seven factorial. So it will be one for the C times seven factorial for this, then times one for the D. And this simplifies to seven factorial. So my favorable outcome is seven factorial, right? Now I have the possible outcome, which is um, nine factorial and the possible uh, favorable outcomes, which is seven factorial. Then I go on to find the probability of a word starting with C and ending with D is equals to the number of favorable outcomes over the number of the sample space or the possible outcome, which is seven factorial over nine factorial. And it reduces to one over 72. So this is how one has to approach um, to this problem, but all what you need to understand is we have to use the idea of arrangement before we actually answer the probability question. Let us now go on to B. I've carried forward the information that I found in A, that is the um, number of possible outcomes set S is still nine factorial, but my B has this, that is what is the probability that the word formed will start with the letter O. So we now have to find our favorable outcome, right? That is where it starts with letter O. We call that set F. Then since we have nine position to fill, the first one, we place the O, and as such, it is simply one. Then once we have filled this position, how many letters are left from nine? We have eight. Then once you fill this position, how many are left? Seven. You go on and on until the last position. So by fundamental counting principle, we are saying the number of favorable outcomes is this one times eight factorial. That is eight times seven times six up to one, which is what I have here. Then this reduces to eight factorial. So now I have the possible outcome, the favorable outcome. Now I can go on now to find the probability of a word is starting with the letter O. That is the number of favorable outcomes which is eight factorial over the number of possible outcomes, which is nine factorial. Then this simplifies to 
one over nine. So this is the approach which should be used when it comes to problems involving word arrangements. I think with this, you have understood something.